Students in Franklin County, New York are learning how an important chapter in our nation's history is connected to their own communities right here in the North Country. Our Jack LaDuke shows us. Students at the Essex Hamilton Franklin Bosey's New Vision Series program researched the slave period conditions before Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation. It freed the slaves from the shackles of the cotton fields. A display of the students' research can be seen in the Franklin County Government Center. They um, put together uh, posters with different quilt squares. The quilt squares were, um, some say they were used to communicate amongst uh, freedom seekers because they couldn't read and they needed to communicate in secret to one another. Um, so these quilt squares were used to communicate to one another about the paths that they needed to take or things they needed to be careful of, of along the way. Plantation owners prevented slaves from learning to read or write. They believed that literate slaves were dangerous to them. Each of the quilt squares were placed at different safe houses that the slaves could go to as a place to rest, uh, maybe eat, sleep. Each quilt square has a different meaning. The sailboat quilt square was saying that there was a boat nearby that they could take. There was also the Drunkard's Path quilt square, which told the slaves to move in a zigzag direction because there was a slave catcher up ahead that was looking for slaves, runaway slaves. Research on the Civil War by the students was done by each individual. I really kind of made them do some research on their own and really look into it on their own. I made them make contacts on their own. For example, the students themselves contacted the people at the church and they set up interview times for us to go as a group and speak with them. So I tried to make it as student focused as possible. As a teacher of three decades, Edward said that she learned from the students things about the Civil War she didn't already know. She learned that abolitionist Garrett Smith gave land to slaves valued at $250 in order for them to vote. Back then, one must own property to vote. So I always had um, a specific interest in Abraham Lincoln and what exactly he did. It was interesting to learn that he really wanted to um, sign the Emancipation Proclamation. And just the way that he saw those kind of things was really interesting to me. The great emancipator signed the proclamation in 1863, but it was not effective until the Union defeated the Confederates in 1865 so the Underground Railroad continued to be used. At least one Malone church helped slaves escape servitude. Something that I found interesting about that was that there was three churches built for the first congregational church, and the second one was actually the one where the church members dug the Underground Railroad, and they preserved it for the third building. Only a couple of blocks from where the student's display hangs is a tunnel dug by Congregationalists, and this one was only a few miles from Canada. If apprehended, a slave was returned to their owner and severely punished. We're here in the basement of the First Congregational Church building in Malone, and what you see in front of you here is a tunnel entrance that was part of the Underground Railroad network to hide escaping slaves. There would have been a, a door in this wall someplace, would come in at night. There would be a trap door here. The trap door would be lifted up. This would, would have been a wooden floor in here at that point. They'd go down in there. They'd crawl back, oh, maybe it's about, about 35, 40 feet to under what would have been the front steps of the second church building, big, big you know, whole set of steps. Uh, under there would have been a blank space that they would stay. They would have candles in there or whatever, but otherwise it'd be totally dark. They would stay there until they would then have their next movement from here, either you know, north or east or west, to get to Canada. Runaway slaves would hide in the Malone Church only two or three days before moving north to Canada and finally freedom. For Mountain Lake Journal, I'm Jack LaDuke in Malone. Jack LaDuke's Adirondack Journal on Mountain Lake PBS is brought to you by Northline Utilities.